In a world infested with semi-mediocre podcasts, only one show can bring you an exceptionally mediocre podcast. It's The Indispensable Thursday Show with Sable and Dave. Could, could you give me a little more guitar, eh? That's better. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I was doing earlier? Just when I said, uh, shall, I, shall we roll it, Jimmy? Oh, we get this airplane off. Now leave it, yeah. You know what that's from? Oh, uh, what's it from, Dave? Well, it's a uh, recording on, uh, I can't remember what album it is. Physical Graffiti, maybe, Led Zeppelin. It's Black Country Woman. Uh, really cool song. But it's, they're recording outside, and he just wants to get the airplane to go by. But Robert Plant says, now leave it, yeah. People should go listen to that one on YouTube. So. YouTube is a pretty cool place. It is an amazing place. There's a really cool app called uh, Free, it's a it's Freemake. They have a YouTube downloader, it'll, but it'll just rip music fr- for you. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. You just type in the name of an artist or something. Like, I wanted to check out the Sam Smith guy because I'm kind of old and I don't know who he is. Right. So I just typed in Sam Smith and it came up with a whole, it found a whole list of stuff and it says, you want to download them all? I'm like, yeah. So I downloaded them all <laughs> and turned them into MP3s and I threw them into my iTunes library. So now, And it's got the album art and everything. I'm like, it's so easy to not even steal music like totally legally now. Nice, and well, Sam Smith's pretty good. Well, he got that song of the year, so I, you mm-hmm. know, checked it out, listened to it, and I was like, "Oh, you know, this is funny because it sounds exactly like the song I used to listen to when I was a teenager." <laughs> is it free falling? And and then I found out that Tom Petty did actually <laughs> sue Sam Smith, and he did completely steal the song. I liked the other one that's called. Uh... I, oh God! It's over. That he's someone. Someone's cheating on somebody. I know. You. Know, I know. I can't remember right now. I'll have to look it up. I didn't even plan on talking about Sam Smith. It just sort of came to me. So I'll, maybe I'll uh, look that up during the show because it's so important that I get that out. That, that is the nature of the beast. Mm-hmm. What's fascinating to me that the that the song of the this is old news. Grammys was you know before the last show, which you didn't attend because of your uh, personal problems. <laughs> Yes. We all have personal problems. Dave's kept him from the podcast. A horrible herpes outbreak. No, it was actually my lower back. I don't know which one would be worse. Hmm. Uh, probably herpes outbreak. No, I don't know, man, because the lower back pretty much sucks. I <laughs> well, don't know. <laughs> anyways, uh, you know, way back in time after the Grammys, I was surprised that the song of the year was something that had been just blatantly ripped off and unlicensed from another artist. Which one is that? That's what, the Sam Smith song. Oh, okay. Uh, but not even sampled. It was more like a he's so shy, uh, my sweet lord thing, right? Where he kind of maybe subconsciously just sort of did the riff because he liked it, but he's heard it before, that kind of thing. No, it's my understanding that they just took the exact song, the the melody and the chords, and just changed it a little bit. You know, like when you were a kid, and maybe you still have this, well, when I was a kid, we would do research papers, and we would open mm-hmm. this book we had these reference books in the library called the encyclopedias. And I know the kids don't have them today. But so what some people would do is open the encyclopedia and just copy word for word from the paragraph. Yeah. Now, if you were good, you would read the paragraph and write something that was kind of like it. But you couldn't actually – the teacher couldn't say, well, you wrote these five words. They're exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Well, if you wrote the five words, they're exactly the same. It's plagiarism. So – I believe, according to Court of Law, um, the song of the year was plagiarized. Yeah, well, nowadays they'll give you Grammys, though, for actually lifting pieces of other people's songs and putting them into your song. Oh, come on. That's been happening since the early days Mm -hmm. of sampling and hip-hop. Yeah, but you get Grammys for it. Like Rhythm Nation's a great song, but it's great because she used Sly and the Family Stone. You Mm -hmm. know, Thank you for letting me be myself again. Um, Which is a good song. Okay, I, let's wrap it up. I think we've delighted our <laughs> listeners long enough, so uh, we'll be signing. Oh, well, welcome again, listeners. This you are listening to Sable and Dave on the Indispensable Thursday Show. T I T S. The intro should have given it away, but it's nice to introduce ourselves. I'm Sable. I'm Dave. I hate the way I introduce myself. I have no idea how to introduce myself. It's always bad. How would you like to introduce yourself in a perfect world? I don't know. Like maybe like Don Pardo would would do it. Like uh, featuring Dave Smith. We could do the introduction, you know, we could bring in a voice announcer to introduce us, kind of like the guy on the tape does. Okay, maybe, yeah, we'll do that. Well, we do say, here's Sable and Dave, I guess we do, with Sable and Dave. So. It be something your, like... We're, doing our, 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 we're, we're fine-tuning the show during the podcast now. This is great for people. Introducing Sable and Dave. 
That's good radio right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had a joke I wanted to tell you. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get to the opening in a minute. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still haven't opened you, the show. You mentioned YouTube, and um, mm. one thing I'd heard about on one of my many, many podcasts that I'm trying to listen to, that there was this Star Wars radio drama that came out in 1981. I think I remember and that. And I think it was brought... The first episode was broadcast over... Th- is it... 30 30 minute episodes or 20 30 minute episodes on the BBC. Hmm. And apparently they spent six months doing the um, audio engineering on this. They had most of the cast from the 77 film plus a bunch of new cast. It was a total of, well, it couldn't have been that many episodes. It was a total of five hours. So it couldn't have been 30 episodes. That I just found it sense. weird because Michael Caine did the voice of Obi Wan Kenobi and it was just so weird. He'd be like, if you strike me down, I should become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. It didn't work for me. <laughs> but, I'm just well, kidding. I have no idea who did the voice for Obi Wan Kenobi. But I heard it was pretty amazing. So I'm looking it up on Amazon. It's like sixty bucks. Oh. I was like, well, man, I could probably get an audible. Sixty dollars means you should steal this uh, thing instead. <laughs> well, so I, I said, well, maybe is it worth the money? Is it worth the sixty dollars to get these three radio dramas? So I go to YouTube, I type it in, and it just starts playing, <laughs> and it's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's well done. It got the good accents. Does it have the same actors uh, for the most part doing things? Or some of the actors are the same. Mm-hmm. So Mark Hamill's the same, but um, Darth Vader isn't. Ooh, that's Han- a, that's kind of a big one to not Han do. Solo is a different he's, guy. He's, he's all voice. James Earl Jones. Who did they? They uh, didn't try. They didn't get James I don't Earl Ray. That would be really terrible. Just... I didn't get that far <laughs> in the YouTube video. I hope nobody gets that. That was a really insensitive joke. <laughs> Everyone's Googling James Earl Ray now. What? 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 <laughs> You'd hear me typing if I did it, so. I'm just, I'm oh just going to leave it. So did you have your, um, did you have something to share with us? Oh, I just had a joke that just popped into my head, because sometimes we like to just open with a joke, and uh, this one was, uh, 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 <laughs> centers around a couple of uh, Palestinian ladies sitting down for tea at their, one of their lady one of the ladies' houses, and uh, it's a picture of a young young man up on the wall and the the mother says you know that's uh, it's muhammad he uh martyred himself uh, last year 16 years old and the other lady says yeah they blow up so fast these days so there you go it's so true in that palestine area yes that's scary 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 mm-hmm. well politics aside <laughs> i do want to uh extend uh, a little gratitude towards some of our listeners we were specifically requested to be to put the podcast into tune in radio. Oh good. So that took about a week and a half from the time I made the request till I submitted the feed information, got confirmation, and we are in tune in radio. Yay. So if you're listening on tune in, welcome. And if you have tune in and you would like to use that, just go search for Sable and Dave, we'll pop right up. Oh yeah, baby, we'll pop right up. Did you watch the Oscars? I know you did because I was with you. <laughs> that that's called a loaded question for you in the audience. <laughs> in fact, um, I was so oblivious this year. I was just going to barbecue steaks on my charcoal barbecue. I figured I'm done with the cold weather. <laughs> it's going to be summer already. You're so, such a non movie geek. You didn't know until I said, "Oh, I assumed it was because the Oscars are on." And I said, uh, "Oh, what time does the Oscars start?" So I looked at Lori and I said, "Hey, we're having an Oscar party now." <laughs> <laughs> but I was still barbecuing steaks. They were fine steaks too. T bones, right? Uh, ribeye, ribeyes, bone right. in With ribeye bone. from yeah, so good. Stater Brothers, which by the way is but, an, yet another place I can pay with Apple Pay on my. Uh, really, Stater's lets you do the on Apple my pay. mongoloid phone here. Great. <laughs> How meta would it be if you went and you bought you just bought apples with Apple Pay? That would be kind of cool, huh? Yeah, man. Not that cool, but I mean, you know, it's cool. I'm, hey, anything that's Apple Pay related, I'm pretty down with. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you have any thoughts about the Oscars? Uh, I, you know, best picture. Did you watch all the way to the end? Did you see who won? I could this? not watch to the very end. The most important part, because I have small kids and I had to do bedtime and and all that stuff. So after they were over, after the kids went to bed, I had to go follow them and go. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. But the beginning was. I really, really enjoy the whole opening sequence. With you know, we were sitting there naming off. Uh, oh, Back to the Future. Oh, like just <laughs> that's what's fun about the Oscars. You know, too. That, There's so many movie references in there, and if you're a 
excuse me, I just burped. If you're a long time movie fan, you know, it's kind of fun to look at all the Easter eggs they're putting into these uh, these numbers. It's, well, it's like one or two seconds, something would flash by, and we're just shouting out, oh, it's this movie, it's that movie, it's that, 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 that. And that was enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I could have done uh, without uh, Doogie Hauser in his underpants. It was funny, <laughs> but I still could have done without it. Mm hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up the fact, too, that uh, you did not see uh, any references uh, during the opening number two movies like, what's one with Jennifer Aniston with the dog, Marley and Me? Oh. Yeah. That 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 stuff does not appear in those because they're worthless movies that nobody remembers, but the, it was my downfall in that trivia game we played because I did not know <laughs> crappy movies that nobody remembers. <laughs> You know, they hardly ever ask, you know, which movie won Best Picture in 1958, which I don't know, by the way. I just threw that up by, by uh, accident. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, Marley and Me. I, why would I remember that movie? I don't know. Or or Scarecrow 4. <laughs> These are not trivia questions for trivia games. But anyway, uh, yeah, Doogie in his underwear, underpants. I like to say underpants for some reason. I don't, I don't know. I, actually, I really like Doogie Howser. Uh, I, was, I was into the musical Rent. Did you ever watch the musical Rent? One song. Glory. Oh yeah, love it, One love. It. I got the, I got the CD. I got the book. I've performed mm-hmm. most of those songs at some point over mm-hmm. the last 12, 14 years, and so I got to see it when I was living in, uh, I guess Austin, and mm-hmm. I came out to LA and they were doing it, they were doing Rent. So you know we got tickets, the cheap tickets, and we went in there, and there was Doogie Howser on stage. He was playing Mark. And he was fantastic. He's Mark the A's guy. I don't really know the characters too well, but I like the songs. No, Mark was the struggling film writer. Okay. And uh, he was great. And I'll never forget him doing Rent in the Pantages. Mm-hmm. I've never been to the Pantages. It was one of the, one of the better versions of Rent I've seen, which I have unfortunately seen five times. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I don't know why. And each one, they're all different, and they're all great. Well, I've seen the BBC version of Pride and Prejudice like five or six times, and I watched the whole thing all the way through. It's like five hours, so that's Why is pretty that? sad. I don't because I love it so much. It's oh, the one okay. with Colin Firth and Jennifer Ale, uh, best one out there. So if you guys, uh, if anyone wants to see a good Jane Austen uh, uh, adaptation, that's the one. Well, I won't be watching your Jane Austen adaptation. I have to catch up on the current episode of uh, season five of The Walking Dead that I'm behind on. Mm-hmm. And the second to last episode of Star Wars Rebels came out, mm-hmm. so I'm going to be watching that. After we wrap the show tonight, okay, then we'll have to wrap it up early. So, well, speaking of Star Wars, I mean, you're a Star Wars fan, sure. I believe you can recite every line in in the original Star Wars movie. Yes, pretty in much. A New Hope. Well, we were walking back from this, when I saw uh, it, it wasn't called A New Hope; it was just called Star Wars. Star Wars. Well, I was walking back. I took my family to dinner at the new pizza place over there. Mm-hmm. Had a very nice Belgian um, um, Seven Swans. It's a dark beer served in a little fancy glass. With no bitterness. 13% alcohol, no bitter. Hmm. Not an IPA? No, not an IPA. They should get Cindy Brady, you know, Susan Olsen, to do the commercial for that. Remember that episode where she was lisping and they had her practicing and she would say, Seven silver swans swim silently seaward. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> I got a million of them, sadly. So, That's so, all I got. <laughs> so we're walking back from this great little pizza uh, place, pizza and bar, and uh, we see a lightsaber. So we cruise on over. And uh, Lori says, "Oh, I, I heard there was a bunch of people who were lightsabers at the park. It must be it must be on Tuesday nights." So we go talk to the guy, and he's part of it's called Saber Guild, and they they practice every Tuesday night at the park across the street from my house, from uh, seven to eight, and then they hold their meeting. They're a nonprofit, and they do charity work. No, they don't make any money. <laughs> no, no, no. Huh. Sorry. But they're, they're a weird. bunch of martial artists and costumers who are all Jedi. And um, okay. you can laugh, but it, man, it looks like fun. The guy had a really nice um, dueling you know, replica lightsaber, mm-hmm. and he had some good moves. And I thought, man, I should get one of those and go out and work out. Well, if, if, if we wandered over there right now with our uh, with our old fashions that you made, you handmade with mm-hmm. care, uh, I might enjoy it if I wandered around and started talking to some folks over there. Handcrafted. I don't know. And those guys still have sex with women, too, which is amazing. Probably some of them. So the guy was there with his kid, and he was showing some pictures because mm-hmm. we, I guess we were there before the rest of the meeting, rest, rest of the training people showed up. So he was showing pictures of his kid and the different costume sets. So they've all, they all have costumes for the new Star Wars. Uh, the, with, he's Kanan, 
His kid is Ezra, his wife is Hera, and his daughter is Sabine. So they make their costumes, they you know, they go out and they do the the events and they go to the celebration. They, it was really fascinating. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I would enjoy going out and doing some fighting. I don't know if I would go far enough to build my costume and go be part of the show. Because usually when I'm in a show, I want to play guitar. Mm-hmm. Or sing. Well, I but, know when they get home, he's like, hey, baby, let's have a little love. And she's like, let me take off my costume first. He's like, no, <laughs> leave it on. He says, you can take off your costume, but you have to leave the Twi'lek head on. I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> the Twi'lek, they have the big uh, the tentacles on their head. Oh, like... Uh, in, in Jabba uh, the Hutt's palace, yeah, he had a, yeah, a, that guy. sort of a name? sexy Twi'lek. Yeah, I, uh, at one point I knew his name, but now I don't remember. Well, there was like a slave chick Twi'lek too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember her. So in the in the new Star Wars show, uh, the Star Wars Rebels, Hera is is a sexy Twi'lek. She's mm-hmm. a not a force user, but she's a bad badass force fighter. Force user. This is getting out of control for me. I don't know. We're gonna have to get back to Patricia Arquette. <laughs> 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 Patricia Arquette, who won Best Supporting Actress for Boyhood, or did she win Best Actress? No, Best. Who won Best Actress? Jeez, I, if only there were. This was your job to pull, to pull up the list up, of uh, all this, these. <laughs> Patricia Arquette won for. Uh, I guess it was Best Actress. Yeah, won for uh, Boyhood, which is the film that was shot by uh, Richard Linklater over a per- twelve-year period, and you mm-hmm. see the people, you know, actually aging twelve years. It was interesting for that, but that's the main interest point of that movie was that but it was it was good otherwise but she did her she went into her rant about about something about uh, uh equal they gave wages birth to taxpayers women. and citizens and they equal wages for women it's like no uh, I, I hate when they bring this up because she doesn't know look you can convince me of this phenomena by mm-hmm. showing me pick an industry show me salaries of men and women that work in that industry and hours worked. That's all you need to do. No one's ever done this study. But we do know that men work more hours. And we know that men usually uh, are in more dangerous uh, um, uh, occupations that often pay more. And like I said, they work more hours. And women often drop out of the workforce for a while. They have babies and stuff. This is this is where your discrepancy comes in. She's an idiot and doesn't bother to look into these things. And women are probably actually paid more than men because uh, they get to take more time off. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, everybody. And she's an idiot. There, Dave has spoken. In the, in some fields, I think there may be a little discrepancy. Well, you mean the entertainment industry, the movie industry, <laughs> which is what she should have singled out? They have the worst. <laughs> they do actually have the worst income disparity. But you know what? I don't care. I'm the one paying the ticket prices. I, I, mm-hmm. If I want to go see a female actor more, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. If I don't, I won't. I Who prefer cares? to see female actresses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson was looking really good, and so was uh, Lupita Nyong- Nyong- What's her name? Uh, Nyong'o is that Lupita Nyong'o? Something like that. Oh yeah, the, la- the ladies dress. at She's the party. Super dark skinned black chick. From, she's African. The ladies she in the gorgeous. party were going nuts for her. She is. She was her like skin the belle of the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very like, that's, nice. Uh, that's a dress for sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, you mentioned the uh, the old fashions, which man. Getting good at these. Yeah, you are. They're good. The, the the drink of Don Draper from Mad Men. I know how to make exactly three drinks, and I made them all at our Oscar party. Mm-hmm. So the the old fashioned is getting good. But I started making this because, um, well, when I bought that fancy ice kit, I told my wife, "Well, maybe I'll make a cocktail or two. So she went out at Valentine's Day and she bought me a little special mixing kit mm. from the mixing glass in Costa Mesa. So I've got the the bitters, a couple different types of bitters. I've got a fancy spoon, the the gum syrup. I've got organic sugar cubes. So I got some stuff to try out. Yeah, you, when you open up your case, it reminds me of like getting an abortion in the fifties. Yeah, so, you, know, you pull all these tools out. I'm like, Ooh, what's that for? That's gonna end the life of my nascent human being inside my <laughs> belly. Oh no, it's just gonna it's just gonna strain uh, liquor over a sugar cube. Good. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so anything more on the Oscars we want to talk about? Uh not really. I enjoyed the show. Didn't, Wait, didn't, did didn't you finish ask yourself watching Birdman? A, you just asked yourself a question? Yeah, and I asked answered. myself a question. I said self. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are, what are the thoughts you have on the Oscars? Well, I thought well, I'm glad that Samsung didn't sponsor the Oscars this year 
because it was just ridiculous last year with uh, what's her name, Ellen DeGeneres, oh, the selfies and, and the crap. selfies. And yeah, she doesn't even use a Samsung; she uses an iPhone. Mm. So I was glad that there was that that uh, Doogie didn't have a Samsung on stage. So I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. However, every other commercial was a cheesy Samsung commercial, which I just I'm over it. <laughs> but did you see the Apple commercial? I don't remember it. I'm sure I did, but I don't remember it. So the Apple commercial was for the iPad. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't about, hey, look, here's an iPad. We've got this really great screen. It was, uh, oh, what was his name? <laughs> uh, we should look this up in the future. They were they were making films. It was all about filmmaking on the right. iPad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all yeah. the tools of filmmaking and you know, hooking oh, up. No, I'm thinking the one that you wouldn't want to use, the, the, other, the other product that someone made a movie on. What was it? Remember that one? The Barbie? <laughs> the Barbie doll? No, it was, the woman was making this movie, and it was like she made it on a tablet or something. We're like, why would you do that? It was, it was not. We we commented about it. I don't remember. Oh, well, that was the that was yeah, also whatever. Samsung. Yeah, it was a Samsung thing. But but the Apple one was <laughs> they they never said in there buy the iPad. It was like here's you know this wonderful creative pursuit and all these levels of life that you can be creative in, and here's how people are making film from student films to professionals. And well, I they, thought, wow, that's pretty inspiring. Yeah, they don't have to say iPad anymore. It's become like Kleenex. All tissues are Kleenex. So all tablets uh-huh. are now iPads. As far as my daughters are concerned, we have like five different iPads, but one of them is a, a Android t- uh-huh. tablet, you know, and one of them is, you know, they, they call it the red iPad or the brown iPad, depending on the case, but they're different. <laughs> well, according to the NFL too, you know, Microsoft mm-hmm. paid a lot of money <laughs> to make a, you have to have a Microsoft Surface because we're paying you big money for that. And and the NFL was like, you can't even pay us to say the word Surface. We're going to call it an iPad. Oh, it's a Surface. No, it's an iPad. You look on CNN and they have Microsoft Surfaces everywhere, but then you look the camera the other side and it's all iPads leaning against them. Yeah, they actually had to put Microsoft Surface on the back of them because they kept just <laughs> accidentally referring to them as iPads when they were looking them up on that you know, NFL stuff. But it's like Xerox. Or, I'm going to make a Xerox of that. Mm-hmm. Or give me Kleenex. Yeah. Those are brand names that have defined the uh, the the product line for everybody, which is good for them. I didn't think I needed an iPad until Steve Jobs made me realize I needed an iPad. It was it, awesome. Well, come on. When you, when you saw the iPad released, you knew that was the future, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. I love it. Mine flew off the top of my car and smashed on the ground. It was run over by another car and was still working. <laughs> I just had to get the screen replaced. I was I, I, I it something hit the top of my car. Left it on the roof because it was in the garage in the dark, and I forgot mm-hmm. about it. I drove out. It was dark, and I hit about 30, 40 miles an hour. I heard a thump, and I'm like, what the Christ was that? <laughs> car behind me. I come back. My thing's laying on there. I'm like, oh, my God. Because I saw the cover still stuck to the roof of my car. I'm like, oh, oh my God. My iPad flew off. The- <laughs> so I'm hyperventilating, and I drive back over there, and I, I see it's been ran over, too. It's got, like, tire prints on it. <laughs> and I pick it up, and I turn it over, and I look, and it says, you have an update from Stitcher? <laughs> Through the cracked glass, I'm like this is a good product. That's right. Through the crack, through the cracked glass, you could get your update to the indispensable Thursday show mm-hmm. on Stitcher Radio. Yep, that's a Neither lovely rain thing. Rain or sleet nor snow nor flying off the top of my Hondo Accord. So, did you ever use your iPad when you were uh, taking a little personal time? You know, off in the room, you mean with the in door the closed, room of my house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or do you, no, or do you I, save your phone for that? I don't spend too much time in there. I'm always like in and out so quick. I never get a chance to read unless I'm sick or something. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Oh, you're one of those guys. I'm one of those guys who's just like, I don't go in there unless I got business to attend to real quick. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, some people are not real quick at attending to their business. And um, it's happened a couple times in the last couple months where I'm texting someone and they're texting and I'm texting and they're texting. And after like, I don't know, five, six texts, I like, I just got a call, right? It's like, there's too many texts. Something's going to get effed up. So I just call and it goes immediately to voicemail. It's not like it rings. It's like I'm text, text, text. With text face cam, FaceTime, right? Call right, right, and the then bowl. it immediately goes to voicemail. And so I call again and it immediately goes to voicemail. And I text back. I'm like, you know, WTF. I just called. And then I get the response, pooping. <laughs> now, if you're pooping... I don't want you texting me. You know, in the old days when we used Didn't to... Didn't you say you were doing this from the bowl too? No, just, it wasn't, okay, no, it okay. wasn't me. I thought you were both pooping, like poop, poop texting each other. <laughs> that was, yeah. Like you, could no, no, s- you know, in the old days you had... Uh, in, I don't know if you ever had the telephone where it was connected to the wall uh-huh. and you had a really long cable. Like you would take that in the bathroom and that would bother me when people would be talking to me whether on the can. <laughs> yeah, it's echoey in there. Like, 
Why why so quiet, Dave? Dave, it's been a really long time. D- Dave? Oh, is the toilet flushing, Dave? Come on. I don't like talking on the phone anyway, so I wouldn't I wouldn't bother talking on the on the bowl like that. Well, that's that. just because we had to do it. If you wanted to get any business done, you had to talk on the phone. S- some t- yeah. Right. Um <laughs> Yeah, that technology like that with the cords. My my daughter, it's uh, one of they were they were complaining about the remote or something like they couldn't find it. I was like, uh, when I was young, my remote was attached to my body. It was called my foot. I'd be laying in front of my TV, and I wanted to turn from channel eleven to channel seven. I had to reach up with my big toe and push that button or twist that knob. Yeah, kids don't care. No, they just want to go to Knott's Berry Farm or Disneyland, preferably. Which who just raises their prices, by the way, to $99 for regular admission. But they do give you a hefty discount of $6 if you're under 10 or something. Or oh, under Dis- three. Yeah. to go to Disney for the day is 99 bucks now? Yeah. Yeah, I might never go to <laughs> Disneyland again. No, we're going to have to sell a lot of ad space on this show. and We don't even have a sponsor this week. <laughs> well, uh, sp- sponsorships may come in the form of um, Disneyland passes. That's okay. You can do that if you like. I'm not going to send them back. So what all the? I have an uh, ex girlfriend that used to work there, but I feel, I don't want to, I don't ever want to contact her to ask her to sign me in. Uh, that why. could be awkward. Yeah, she did once, but I don't want to bug her again. I, it's been it's been years, so I feel bad. Well, it seems like you know all where what all the people that I know are doing is we all have Knott's passes now. Yes. So we're back at Knott's Berry Farm. Passes are cheap. I mean, it's still expensive for five of us, but it's not like I don't need a second mortgage. To, <laughs> I mm-hmm. don't. It's not fifteen hundred dollars. Like it would be for Disney passes. Yes. So uh, not so for uh, for Valentine's Day. We had a, we had a nice date. Nice. Mm-hmm. Not you and I, but Laura. Yeah, and you I. and the wife. I I know you guys said hey, you guys should come over, and I was like limping around the house. I'm like I can't <laughs> walk in Disneyland because of my back. So I let her pick you know anywhere she wants to go because Valentine's Day, the manufactured holiday that it is, is for the women. Yes. And did you go to the restaurant there? The not restaurant or no? Which one? The one like the, the the Knott's Berry Farm like family the restaurant the, that they the have chicken there dinner the chicken dinner place yeah no we don't go there anymore oh, not since not? the cockroach episode oh they shut tell, down the whole tell. chicken dinner restaurant uh-huh. uh, a couple years ago because it it was a cockroach infestation well just look just just like when an airline has a crash they're never safer than right after the crash <laughs> yeah I know so but they're going to be safe now no we went in we saw this really great bluegrass show mm-hmm. it was it was actually a really nice date night. Because we already have our passes, we got parking. We didn't have like you just drive in, you park the car, you walk over there. We saw mm-hmm. this nice little thirty-five minute concert with the bluegrass band. Then we ate at this little barbecue place right next to the bluegrass concert, and the barbecue place was fantastic. Portions were American sized, so she and I could both share <laughs> one mm-hmm. meal, which was great. We went on a couple of roller coasters. The one she had always wanted to go on but couldn't when she had the kids around. Yeah, the wooden the wooden roller coaster. I don't remember what it's called. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Thank Which you. Beat the living crap out of me last time I went on it. Oh, it was great. Yeah. And I, I you took can't her do hand bad with a, even a sore back. I held her hand up, and she spent the whole ride trying to pull it down, and I was trying to hold it up. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're just thrashing back and forth up against the side of the of the roller coaster. Yeah. It was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we we went on the other roller coaster she really wanted to go on. This was really. I'm glad that I went and that we did the ride she wanted to. We went on the one that was overhanging where your feet dangle. Supreme Scream, the best ride in the park, that one, where it goes way up. Oh, no, your roller coaster you're talking roller about where coaster. your feet are dangling. Like twisty you. and... Yeah, it's like Ninja from Magic Mountain. It, yeah, it's exactly like Ninja from Magic Mountain, but I didn't actually catch the name of it. Mm. But it was also great and smooth and fast, and it was lovely. And then uh, I made the worst decision of the month. I bought a whole bunch of Knott's Berry Farm fudge to bring home. <laughs> but that sounds good. Oh, it's so good. But, you know, we just ate fudge day and night for the whole <laughs> next week. <laughs> it's like, oh, I want to try the mint fudge. How about the peanut butter fudge? Oh, what's that one? It looks like some sort of buttercream fudge. I'll take that. What about the coffee fudge? Ooh, that's going to be good in the morning with with coffee. How about work a- out a deal with them to have people, uh, you know, win a, win a trip to go see how the fudge is packed there. At uh, Knott's Berry Farm. That would go over really well in, <laughs> not in Orange County, though. Mm-hmm. How come that just turned red over there? Should I be worried about that? Oh, my goodness. Something went red in Logic Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Something turned red. Do you believe in ghosts? Mm, like the kind that scare the crap out of my kids? Yeah. <laughs> like real ghosts? Like, do you, do they? I don't know. Well, I mean, you mean, have they seen a ghost or do they just think they've seen a ghost? Yeah, they just think they've seen them. 
Mm-hmm. No, I've uh, I've I've spent my fascination time with the paranormal, and I'm not convinced that there are the number of supernatural events that people say there are. Mm-hmm. While I'm not ruling out that there may be some kind of ghost-like thing, I think that everything that everyone ever says they see is crap. Bullcrap. I tend to be with you. I think probably, maybe I lean towards there's probably more people aren't lying, but I don't know if what they're saying is, if their interpretation is true. But I do have a buddy who, uh, we actually experienced something together at his house too, and, and some other friends did too, but he's a, he's a you know level-headed guy, a cop. There's no way he would just make up stories. I, I know him, but he has uh, ha, ha, you know episodes where he's at his house, and uh, he actually thought I was coming by his house one time, but I, I wasn't. I was actually on the freeway, but he, he knew I was going to be in the area, so he thought I had come in the house because he's upstairs, and he hears the door open. Because I used to live with him, their roommate situation. So he hears the, and then footsteps walk all the way around his uh, living room into his bathroom and close the door. He's like, oh, it must be Dave. He probably had to come home, you know, drop a deuce uh, on the freeway. He probably had to come off and, you know, get off and, uh, and uh, take care of business. So he's waiting up there and waiting up there. And he's like, Where the hell? what the hell? So he goes downstairs and the door is still locked and there's nobody, there's nobody there. He's like, what the, what the Christ was that? And he's been on his couch. He's like reading or something. And, you know, like in the evening, couch lifted up, like, <laughs> like off the, like, what the, what the hell was that? And then they'll have, you know, uh, you know, kitchen doors slamming <laughs> in there, footsteps coming down the hallway. And it'll be, this will be during a conversation with someone just, just talking. And then you start to hear someone walking towards you and there's no one there. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what that is though. Like, is it, wh- what the hell could that be? Sounds like a poltergeist to me. Yeah, it is a poltergeist, which, uh, yeah, interesting. You've watched Ghost Hunters? No. I love, I love that show. I, I watched it at his house. But actually, during the show, we uh-huh. were watching Ghost Hunters at his house. And, uh, both of us, it sounded like someone walked past the couch and was saying "shh," like telling us to be quiet. And when I when it, and it disappeared out the front window, I looked up. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, it was while we were watching Ghost Hunters, so that was pretty weird. Coincidence? Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what it is. But I don't. I, and there, and there's a there's a I was going to mention there's a podcast that I like called Anything Ghost. Anything I dis- Ghost. I discovered it uh, recently. It's been going for years, but all it is is this guy just reads ghost stories that people send him. And you know what? You know what I think a lot of them are not necessarily true in the sense that it was the ghost that you thought it was, and it's this dead person. But I think the people actually did experience that. Mm-hmm. And there, there, there's too many really good stories that are just sent in by non-storyteller people that are too good. Like right. it had to have happened. There's no way this dumbass could have made that that story because it's too cool. <laughs> you know, there's too many of them coming in. And really interesting stories. It's a pretty good podcast. Anything ghost. Anything ghost. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, people telling you stories, I think we have some listener feedback this week. Oh, let me look that up before we go here. Well, yeah. you bring you bring up our uh, listener email, and I'm going to tell you a couple of things that came to me indirectly. Okay. The first one was from a very frustrated listener who didn't get some of the humor in our podcast episode five, and they said, your podcast is like sticking a corkscrew in my brain. I can't tell what's real or made up. <laughs> Episode five being uh, all things being equal episode or is no this all is things before? being equal was uh, last week episode eight. Mm-hmm. What was episode five? Uh, you got to look it up on the website. Oh, let's see. Now, I'm two happy. episodes ago, we were sponsored by that app Junk Blocker. Oh, they they, they tried to go down. Well, I got another feedback that said I spent hours <laughs> looking for that Junk Blocker app. Where oh, is the link? <laughs> I'm sorry, people. <laughs> That was Junk Blocker. That was the Junk Blocker episode. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Sorry, listener. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, there was a, an... They an, really wanted to... Well, I would too. As a parent, I want Junk Blocker. <laughs> there was an anonymous request... It was request. on the Je Suis Skeptique uh, episode. Oh, Je Suis Skeptique. Thank you. Oui. There was an anonymous request for um, for a guest. And I said, no, no, we don't take guests. Not unless yet. you're going to Snapchat in. <laughs> oh, okay. If you're going to Snapchat like John and Anna did, you can come and come on in. Who, but, is, are they proposing themselves as a guest, or uh, well, to get? It was for some ranting feedback. Some uh, mm-hmm. um, some of the ladies are very angry at you, Dave. So I didn't want to have them in here on the microphone <laughs> screaming at you. Some of the ladies, yes, some of the ladies. Good, good. Let's now, get and them it, in here. <laughs> and at least one friend. Are they of, hot? And uh, <laughs> at least one friend of mine um, from last last episode from All Things Being Equal, was so upset that at four minutes and 19 seconds, 
he shut the podcast off and said, I'm not having any more of this crap. <laughs> good. That's what I like to hear. People getting so angry they shut the podcast. That's he was good. so angry. He shut it off. I had to text message him later. <laughs> so can- did he listen to the rest uh, of the show? Yeah, he got he yeah. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I didn't think we'd fool anybody. <laughs> No, great. Now I called him a fool. I'm just kidding, but you no, know, no. you know what I mean. He's a great guy. You know what I mean. Um, if I yeah, did, I met him. He seemed like a nice fellow. If I had done a better job of um, with with the post audio production, if I was more NPR like in my whole production setup, it would have sounded even better. Mm-hmm. But I'll do better the next time. <laughs> so you, you have our other feedback ready? Oh yeah, uh, this one came in from um, Vera Vera Me like M I. Uh, let's see. It says uh, hello an exclamation point. I do not really know how to start with this letter. Okay, I'll start by saying that I am addressing a man on the web for the first time in my life. Wow. I am a little thrilled and shy. Are you all alone? I think she means alone. Are you hoping to find a girl for getting rid of dark thoughts and starting a family? I am searching for a fellow who is able to love me, respect me, and treat me well. I need a male to start love with. (laughs) <laughs> this is great. I haven't read this yet. I'm just I'm experiencing it for the first time. She must really you. like you. You made me believe in love at first sight. My name is Vera. I uploaded pictures to help you remember me. <laughs> Did you see the pictures? For the- I think that I left the pictures out of the Slack. If you're interested in me, please write me back only in caps to my personal mailbox and hmm. Your name is Genshin or something. I am waiting for your answer to my letter. Write me back, please. I hope you fancied me. She might be British with the fancied. Oh, fancy. I will be looking forward to your letter. I mean, the person who wrote this spam might be British. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I will be like, this is not spam. This is a viewer mail. What am I saying? I will be looking forward to your letter. Have the best time in your life. Meet you online. Wanting you. That's how she signed off with wanting you. Oh. She didn't really talk about the podcast, though, which is... Um, you no, she must, have, that in a, she in must a, have Googled Dave Smith... Mm-hmm. And come up with all the uh, hot pictures. And- There's lots of me, and I like that. People have a hard time finding me online, which is such a good thing. <laughs> like when I go to a job interview, I do not want them finding this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guy thinks rape is okay at some point. No, no, no. We clar- <laughs> we clarified that rape is not okay under any circumstance, and that sometimes people argue about the definition of rape. Sure, but sure. we were merely exploring the conversational yes, rape topic. Rape should always be illegal. I was speaking of moral. I wouldn't care if Hitler got raped. That kind of stuff is what <laughs> right, I'm saying. Right, right, right. I don't. Even I don't want to really bad women. I, I don't. Care I don't want to drudge it up again. But it's more sexy to say. When when is rape okay? Exactly to word it that way, for, just for you people who. who uh, so uh, I, on the other hand, don't have that problem. <laughs> you search for me, and you get my whole life. You're the only <laughs> Sable Cantus I've ever seen or known. I had an ex girlfriend, the same one that worked at Disneyland, by the way. I said, "Look, we were talking about the N word." I go, "If you were getting raped by a black guy, would you ever call him an N word?" She's like, "No." I go, "Would you shoot him in the face?" She said, "Yes." Wow, that's pretty. You'd shoot him in the face and blow his brains all over your wall, but you wouldn't call him a bad name. Yeah, she wouldn't want that to. That is a really She bad wouldn't lower herself, <laughs> lower her racial standards. She's going to treat people equally. Wow. She would blow off the face of a white guy if he was raping her mm-hmm. or an Indian would she call guy. Him a cracker, probably. Maybe. Honky. Ask Pontiance what, <laughs> what, <she would> <laughs> what she would say. Ask Pontiance what she would say. Pontiance. Hmm. Uh. I'm going to have to write a whole new... Her, her language was not appropriate for this podcast. Yeah, there's a lot of beeping on that Pontiance. <laughs> What's that Pontiance bad? We should interview Pontiance. <laughs> the actress who played Pontiance doesn't want to do any more Pontiance. <laughs> if we do interview Pontiance, it cannot be in my studio because I don't want any of my stuff to go missing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Was there one more that you wanted to share? Or, oh, or, uh, or are I we done? Think, uh, yeah, there might be one more listener feedback, but I'm, I'm not really good at navigating through Slack. Okay, hello, Romeo. Is romance still left in you? Do you still believe in love and romance? Do you need someone special to feel those wonderful moments of love and care in life? Then you are the one I am in search of. So are thousands of girls in this website where I have registered at... HTTP colon slash slash Toyota Forum dot com. It's Toyota. It's funny. Toyota, Toyota Forum dot for, com <laughs> slash show thread dot PHP question mark T equals eight 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 nine six and sign P equals one four seven two seven. 
hashtag post 147274. That's that catchy name. I love this site because they believe in love, romance, and the sanctity of family life. Well, don't you think that these values are the most missed ones in your modern day life? I am Evgenia from Russia, and I've grown up seeing my parents share this above said feelings for each other. Although above said feelings. You know, sharing the above said feelings for each other all through my childhood and teenage till now. I wonder what happened now. Oh, they must not was love each other anymore. Something about, uh, did something happen? I, well, Dave. That's where the message stops, by the way. I, there's no... <laughs> I think you should so, not go to the Toyota forums, because <laughs> if you really did meet thousands of lonely Russian girls, they would drain the love out of you. Mm, uh, I wouldn't mind trying that for like a few months. That would be okay. They can drain me. <laughs> I think those know. days are past for us, sir. They are. <laughs> you had your chance. One. Uh, uh, my wife was born in Ukraine. You had w- one daughter ago, <laughs> two daughters ago. <clears throat> you had your chance. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's all over. Just hang that stuff up on a shelf. Okay, well, Eva Janaya, um, send us a picture of yourself. <laughs> send us pictures to Dave at the Indispensable Show dot com. Mm-hmm. Do it. Do it now. Well, this has been a great show about nothing. <laughs> this is the perfect kind of show. Mm-hmm. We're talking about nothing. The I, I I skipped one topic, two topics. Oh, really? What, um, what next next week, I really want to talk about how because uh, you know we really are focusing on our living fulfilled creative lives here, and uh, I think I'm, I'm I'm focused on living a life without back pain. But <laughs> same you, thing, okay. same thing. And I think that our podcast really is about helping people. So what I want to talk about is you know building excellence you know, the habit of being excellent. And uh, also something I've been thinking about lately is that young people are just so screwed. They're so screwed. But anyways. Oh, indeed they are. I'll save that for another time. <laughs> Let's start off next time with that, but we're going to forget what we said by the time we roll the next day. Uh, no, come on, man. I got Dropbox and uh, plain text notes. Nothing will ever be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's so true. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I'd like to thank all the listeners for tuning in. Thanks for our tune-in listeners, our Stitcher listeners, uh, our uh, iTunes listeners. Sure, you want to throw an S at the end of those because maybe Lis- all listeners, together they might listeners. Yeah. Hey, listeners is accurate. Everyone True. who visits the website, the couple of you that actually went to YouTube and listened to our bits, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> All our of our sterile videos are going strong over there. I haven't checked lately. I'm going to look up right now to see how many hits Bruce Hardiswood has. Let's I want to make sure sterile is still sterile. Bruce you can, Hardiswood. You can listen to the show in your favorite podcast client or on the web at theindispensableshow.com. You can contact us at Twitter, on Twitter, at Sable and Dave. Hey, actually did have some more hits on Bruce Hardiswood. Thank you. People. All right. All right. I know one of those is at least my uh, aunt and uncle. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm glad your back's better. So, let's wrap it up. And how about I see you next week? See you next week. Yeah.